Now, my first guest tonight is changing the movie business with his pioneering approach to making films. He directed such hits as El Mariachi and the Spy Kids trilogy. His latest film, Sin City, opens on Friday. Take a look. That's what I'm talking about. Please welcome Robert Rodriguez, everybody. How are you? I heard it was you're, Texas now. You're from Texas, I, I think. I heard you're from Texas. I've been to Texas. I had a nice time in Texas. It's a great place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come from Texas, don't you? San I Antonio? come from Texas. I live in Texas. I live in Austin now. Austin, but Texas. But we make our movies down there, and it's, um, it's cool. Is it's Austin place. swanky and hip? It's very eclectic. Eclectic. You got college, you got the university, you know, with the, you got politics, you got t high technology, you have a movie industry, you have the music industry. So everyone kind of does their own weird like thing. It's a very interesting place. It is. It, you know, it keeps it interesting. You, you, ever been to, you ever been to Dallas? <laughs> Dallas? Dallas is pretty cool. You know? I, I, but I'm Austin, a, there's something really special about Austin. All right. I'll go to Austin next time, but Dallas, I had a great time. <laughs> No, 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 it's fine. So listen, you, you, your, your family, you grew up in San Antonio, yeah. right? You had like 13 kids in your family? There's 10 of us. 10 of us? felt like 13. Yeah. Where did I hear 13? Is that just like an unlucky number? That I <laughs> no, no, it was 10. Or, it was 10. Was I was the third oldest. And uh, my first movies uh, had my brothers and sisters in it. I was going to ask you. I've been in the home since I was about 12 years old. Yeah, because El Mariachi, which is, was a movie which you made for... Now, a normal studio movie, so the folks understand, a normal budget on a studio movie is what? 60, 60, 70 million dollars? 70 million nowadays, it's yeah. more like 100. Yeah, like 100 million, for yeah. something like, not even spectacular, just like people yeah. acting and stuff, like Meet the Fockers or something. Good movie, yeah. right? No, no, it's a good movie. Yeah, but like nothing like crazy 80. happens, no. just people going, hey, you're a wacky guest, you too. That's like 100 million dollars. Yeah. And you made El Mariachi for 7,000 yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how can you make that so cheaply? How can you, what's the difference? I did every job on the, on the project. Really? Yeah. So and you I didn't like, pay myself anything. You didn't pay yourself <laughs> And you had the camera, like... On a wheel. I mean, you just made it any way you could. And what's cool is a lot of people now, I mean, I've met people who read, like, a book I wrote on that 10 years ago when they were 12, and now they're 22 making movies. Yeah. And, and they're going through the same process, and it's wild to meet them and say, I was inspired by what you did, and now I'm doing the same thing. And it's true, it's really, I'm, I'm here in Hollywood now, meeting agents and going to studios, and... I don't want to be here. I want to go back home and make movies at home. Right. <laughs> See, I like that. Do you think? Do you think the movie, you know, the movie business is going the way that the music business went? Like, you know, they when people started downloading movies and everything became uh, music. Well, even more than digital. that. Back when uh, about ten, no, probably longer ago, people realized they had equipment, they could record their own album at home, and they could make their own music at home. And now movies are like that. I mean, I do everything out of my house. Really? I roll out of bed. I mix the sound. I'm doing the effects. <laughs> I write Because you do music. the music on your movies yeah, too, Yeah, you just right? do it right there at home. Because I have four little boys and I have to, you know, be a good dad. So I'm yeah, there yeah, with yeah. them and I make movies on the side. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So, so you get movie stars You get movie stars to come down to you in Texas. They come down there, I give them the babies, they burp the babies and we shoot a scene and then it's great. So, yeah. And you make your movies quite quickly, right? We shoot very fast. That's sort of the deal I have with the actors because um, you get that kind of cast and... You save them a lot of time because a lot of movies are spent. They usually say, "I get paid to wait." You know, they're waiting in the trailer a lot of time. Right. I'll hire somebody who may cost twenty million dollars, and I say, "Well, that's because on that movie you were going to be there ten months. You're going to be on my movie ten days. So we'll you pay get? you very well for ten days, and they're they're happy and they don't want to leave. What'd you get for ten days? Like forty bucks, fifty yeah, bucks. Yeah, fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> So they come down. Now, how can you do that? What is the technique that allows you to, to make movies in your house? Because if you have to, like that scene we just saw from Sin yeah, City, yeah. how can you make something like that in your you garage? Know, cool. I used to be a cartoonist, and you, when you're a cartoonist, you sit in one room and you create all these worlds with a pen and paper. And now with digital filmmaking, we're in one room shooting that entire movie. Right so now. how it's do green, you do that? It's a green room. A green and, room. Uh, and we shoot the actor. And you say, okay, right now you're in a hotel. Okay, now you're jumping off. Now you're in the snow. Now you're in a car. And we put all that in digitally to get that style. So it's, just, it's computer graphics. It's computer and you play graphics. with it all the time. And, um, and I'm the effects supervisor, and I do the camera work, and I do the edit. I still make them like I did mariachi. They're just big, giant home movies. And what the actors love about that is it's just so low-key and so experimental that they don't really feel like they're making a big movie. So I think they give them better performances. Yeah, yeah, and they, they, they just have to act. It's like, there's no chair here. Well, act, there's a chair there. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce That's what Willis. you paid for. <laughs> Bruce Willis goes. <laughs> That's right. Bruce Willis. 
and then and when I did a scene with Quentin, he wasn't used to shooting on a green screen. Quentin, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, Quentin Tarantino came and directed a sequence, and uh, we had a car. I said, well, the scene you're directing, there's a car, and we haven't been using the cars. You can just use a steering wheel, and we'll put the car in later. You just have an said, actor sitting with a steering wheel? Yeah, we've well, driven everybody. before. They're actors. They've driven before. They go, that, they know what that feels right? like. And he said, no, I want to see him in the car, see him kind of side by side together. And then he did one shot like that, and all right, get rid of the car. I don't want to shoot. Really? He got into that way of shooting. And, and then you just concentrate on performance. That's what's really great about it. And do you, do you still have your family work on, on your movies, or do you actually hire people from outside now? Yeah. I have a lot of family still show up and work on the yeah? movies. Definitely. In fact, the next movie I'm doing, my seven-year-old wrote. So he's like my Frank Miller on this one. Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> it's a family comedy. A seven, your seven-year-old son wrote the, your he next movie? He came up with this whole movie, and he was telling me about this character that he kind of created and said, hey, let's make a movie about Shark Boy. I'll be Shark Boy. Shark, shark half Boy. Half Boy, Half Shark. Right. And I'm like, hey, I'm trying to think of the next movie. Hey, hold on a second. <laughs> and it took me a while to realize that was his dreams of empowerment. And then I, I pitched it to the studio, and they said, because I was scrambling for a project, they asked me, do you have any other movies for 3D? And I said, I don't have any. Well, I got this one called The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl in 3D. And they said, Shark Boy that and sounds Lava Girl. fantastic. Yeah. And did, it's like, did, my son wrote that. <laughs> did, did he come up with Lava Girl too? Or did yeah, because I said, well, we need a girl character. What else do we love besides sharks? And he went, Lava? We're always talking about Lava. Sharks and Lava. Yeah. Wait, wait. Are you going to pay him? That's the thing. Since I'm not, I'm not like in the Writers Guild, the Directors Guild, I can actually give him credit where he probably wouldn't get credit because of arbitration process. So it says, based on the stories and dreams of Racer Max. Oh, that's, that's good. Name. That's good. So you can pay your son and give him the credit yeah. in the movie. And the movie business is changing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like that. You're creating stuff um, very organically and in the home. And, and when you're trying to make a movie, like for kids or for families, you're trying to get back to that place when you were seven or eight years old. Exactly. And they're already there. So I want to I thought I've gotten lazy. I've kind of fallen around with a notebook. He's like, <laughs> he's like the golden goose now. You know, it's like, you got any other ideas? Yeah, yeah more stuff, more stuff. We're going to take a break. So we're going to come right back talk about Sin City. Robert Rodriguez, everybody. <laughs> Told you you're from Texas. I yeah. Always oh, comes in handy. Yeah. Do you do that when you're directing? Act? You do. Bruce you Willis. Do really hey, Willis. <laughs> Cut. Cut. That's it. Yeah. You know. So listen, the, on the, the Sin City movie, I want to talk to you about about that. Yeah. You've got a co-directing credit. Yeah. On this, so you you have a guy doing it with you. Who's who's the guy? Well, you... it's it's no ordinary guy. It's Frank Miller who Frank Miller. created. Yeah. He is. A... But Frank, he wrote the, the graphic novels. He wrote, wrote it, he drew it, he inked it, he did the lettering. And I said, I think I know this guy. So I went in and contacted him. And those are like the best written, directed, shot, lit movies never seen on a big screen if you just read the book. So I thought he was already a director. So I told him, I want this to be Frank Miller's Sin City. I don't want to make Robert Rodriguez's Sin City because I love the book so much. And what he was doing in the books was so much bolder than anything we were doing in cinema that I said, let's not insult the book by turning it into a movie. Let's take movies and turn it into a graphic novel by wow. using all these tricks. And I want you there because I want it to be, uh, I just love the books. I want to see that moving on the screen. And when you see the movie, it is unbelievable. People are not going to know what they're looking at. It is really a, mov a moving, living graphic novel. Well, that's what I was going to say. Now, a lot of folks, when they're directing a movie, they make what uh, they call storyboard, right? So they, they, they put out all different shots, draw uh -huh. little drawings, do, you know, and then say, well, I'm going to shoot that, I'm going to shoot that, I'm going to shoot that, right. I'm going to shoot that. Is that what you use the graphic novel like? You use it like a storyboard? It was beyond that, though. I mean, he, he got such great performances from his character, from his paper characters. If you look at the emotion he put on the on the paper characters, the actors could actually look at that, and that was their character study. I mean, they Did could you do that it. to the actors? You go, do that. Exactly. Yeah. We've got to get to that place. And, yeah. they, and then sometimes they have to fill in the blanks. Like um, uh, one of the characters, Benicio, loses his hand at one point and had the gun in it. And the next frame in the comic, he had the gun again. So he goes, well, what if I chew my fingers off the gun and then I can get the gun out of it? It's like, great wow. idea. You know, yeah. it really inspired people to come up with some great in between the panel to, to bring it to life. That was part of the job was us trying to bring it to life. What's the rating on the movie? It's an R-rated movie. It's an R -rated because movie. it's so stylized, like right. the book. Um, it really tempers it and becomes really beautiful to look at. It's very abstract. In a right. Way. And that's what's cool. I think it's really going to show people a different way of visualizing storytelling. Do you I mean, let your kids watch an R-rated movie, even if they come up with the idea? I do let them watch R-rated movies. You do let them watch it? Yeah, um, but I edit them first. I edit them down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can and, uh, edit the I movie took a, in your house. Uh, there's this movie called Heavy Metal, for instance, which I thought they had some cool animation that they would like. Yeah. I edited a 10-minute version of it that they've watched. <laughs> 
Yeah. Now, up until they're about eight or nine years old, and then in a couple of years, I'll issue them a PG-13 version, then I'll issue them an R-rated yeah. version. Nice. Yeah, nice. so that way... Control it. Yeah, that way good. I can enjoy the experience with them, watching me. So what really about fun. what about when you're working with, you know, Frank Miller, who does the, the, the graphic novel, yeah. right? And you're Robert Rodriguez, and you've done a lot of movies, and you're used to being the boss. Right. Now, and you're, the two of you are working together. How, how is that? Because this guy He's is... the boss of his comics. Right. And I've always been, you know, just done my own thing as well. But I, I just thought we were very similar, and that if you got us together, we'd actually be very complimentary. It was really organic. Yeah. And it was very just... Uh, it worked very seamlessly. I mean, it was great having another pair of eyeballs on there, and he knows the material, and the actors would come up and talk to him. That's why I made him a director, so everyone had to respect, you know, his opinion. How, isn't there a union problem? With that, or don't you have to you know, be like... I didn't know that there was until we're about a week away from shooting, and they called and said, You know, the directors you can't have two directors, directors, union? directors Guild of America. Say, what, did, what did they do? Well, they were going to shut the movie down, so what? um, so well, they said, come to your house and say, You can't shoot this movie, stop they it. They can come because you're because you're you're a member. So I told Frank, Well, maybe, well, they don't really care that we both direct as long as only one gets the credit, so maybe you'll just take the credit. And he goes, I can't do that. So, well, what would you do? And he said, On my gravestone, it'll say, Does not play well with other children. I said, <laughs> Same here, I'm quitting. <laughs> you, you quit the director's girl? Director's girl, just so I can make that movie. So that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. That's it. But it's worth it. Yeah. 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 Can you see? I think that's... Uh... When you see the movie, you'll know why. It's really new, it's really different, and that's really why you want to do it. Look at... Your my phone goes? My phone plays Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Hey, I think that's really fitting. <laughs> she is, she is. What's your name? It's my wife. Oh, hey. Hello, honey. Hey, how is she? she okay? You know what? They, you know, hold on a second. I want to tell them something really funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say, you're a Hollywood renegade. And I say, only because, well, if you look at my personal life, I've been married to the same woman for 15 years. So that makes ah. me the ultimate Hollywood rebel. I, I, I think so. I, think I so. love you, honey. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> is she still there? Oh, I just hung up. You cut her off? <laughs> that I don't know about that. married 15 Ma years. 15 years, you can do that. Uh, yeah. Robert, good luck with the chance. movie. I'm sure it's going to be a smash Thank hat. Thank you. So Robert Rodriguez, everybody. Since City opens Friday. We'll be right back with Stone Cold Steve Austin.